I want to bring in Bobby Estrafis' agent if you wanted to uh, join us sure. and ask you a couple questions um, about your and Clay's relationship. Bobby, how did you and Clay uh, get to meet? Or how do you know Clay specifically? Well, I got to know Clay uh, specifically when he was 14. And he was just a baby then. He played on one of our select teams. And one of the fun things I get to read about on the internet and articles is, you know, everybody is Christopher Columbus when it comes to Clay. The Red Sox discovered him. Uh, the Scouts discovered him. Angelina Junior College discovered him. Lumberton High School discovered him. The fact is that the Lord blesses uh, certain people, and he certainly blessed Clay, and he was blessed at 14. There was very little question uh, that if he stayed healthy and if, if he remained focused on what his love and passion for the game were at that time, he was going to make it to, to the point he is now. It's not a big surprise to the people that know him best. And then uh, what, what is something that Red Sox Nation does not know about Clay Buckles that you as his agent might want to tell them? Well, I think there's a lot of things uh, based on some of the things that I, I get the pleasure of reading that, that is either misunderstood about Clay or, or, or they don't know. I think the first thing that, that people in Red Sox Nation don't know, and maybe it's because he's from Texas, is that Clay has a very strong sense of family. I mean, I don't think people understand how much he admires his father. Now, I talked about Christopher Columbus discovering Clay, but let me make it clear, and I think Clay would too, and he would agree with me. His father taught him how to pitch. Clay knows how to pitch. His fundamentals, his mechanics, his poise, his attitude, his confidence on the mound come from his father. I read a lot of times that Clay just learned how to pitch a couple of years ago, and, and, and we laugh about that as a family. Clay's been pitching since he was 12 years old, and pitching very successfully, and earlier than that. Um, his father has a tremendous uh, imprint on, on his success. The other thing that I know people don't know is that all he looks like his dad and he learned to pitch from his dad, he is his mama's baby. I mean, he, he, is, he, he has her heart, her personality, uh, the way she treats people, the way she loves people. Clay's very much like that. Uh, two years ago when he lived with us here in my home, um, he learned songs on the internet with his guitar, and I know he's going to embarrass a little bit, but I'm going to embarrass him because I'm so proud of him. He learned to play certain songs on guitar for my two-year-old baby girl, and, and he does that because he loves kids. That's why he enjoys going to the Dana-Farber Institute uh, and contributing his time and efforts to that organization. We're going to continue to do that. That's his passion. He loves young people. Um, I think the other thing that people don't, or recently that I've read, that might be misconstrued is that Clay's late season um, shoulder fatigue is in somehow related to his ability to pitch. And what I can tell you very specifically, and I know Clay would agree with this because we speak every day, Clay could throw right now. Um, the Red Sox made a decision. We supported their decision. We backed Theo and his progression plans for Clay. Uh, we're very happy uh, with the plan that the Red Sox have come up with for Clay. Uh, we're excited about his API summer, or winter rather, uh, workouts. Uh, Clay is not hurt. He's never been hurt. Um, and in fact, he probably has the cleanest shoulder. The Red Sox doctor told us he has the cleanest shoulder they've seen in 20 years. So having said that, Clay is fine. He will be ready to go. He will be stronger and better than ever come spring training. Um, there is no injury, and, and we wish the Red Sox the best of luck in the World Series, but I want to make sure we cleared that up for uh, his fans and Red Sox Nation. And what do, you, what do you think about the years that Clay's had? I mean, I know you said he was special at 14. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you thought as an agent he was special when he was drafted. Mm -hmm. But looking at how he's progressed and being able to watch him at 14, watch him as a minor league player, mm -hmm. watch him as a major league player, what do you feel about how he's performed in his progression? Well, I think he's made a natural progression. And what I mean by that is I think, he, I think he's gotten better every year of his life. Athletes get better every year. Okay? Good, good players will peak at some point. Their talent level will reach a wall, and they'll, and they'll no longer be able to go forward. Clay has continued every level on a natural progression. 
Although, having said that, I will say this, that this was a pretty spectacular year. I mean, uh, we, our goal was to start in AA and finish in AAA, and maybe we got a cup of coffee. Um, did I think he would not only do that, but throw a no-hitter? Uh, no, I probably didn't think that, although I believe in his ability, and I always have. Clay, but, 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 having said that, let me tell you this. When you have great athletes, they will do great things. And as he gets older and more mature in the way that he conducts himself off the field, in terms of getting his rest and eating properly, he'll continue to do things that you can't believe. So I am not shocked at all uh, that Clay has had the success in the big leagues that he's had. Am I shocked that it happened this year? Maybe. Am I shocked that it's happened at all? Absolutely not. Well, he definitely is a great athlete, but it, it did look like you were beating up a little bit on the golf course today. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think we both were. Uh, one of our great uh, uh, times we get to spend together is each winter we get to spend some time. He comes here and, and we get to be a family again and just play golf and hang out and watch TV. We don't talk about baseball and we don't do anything with baseball. We enjoy our time together very much. And uh Clay's a special person that I look forward to Red Sox Nation getting to know better as a person. I look forward to him being there for the next 10 to 15 years. I think the more that you get to know him, the more that you'll enjoy him more as a person than as a player, as I do. And uh, we're excited about 08. He's committed to his program. We're committed to the Red Sox. And uh, we look forward to a spectacular 08 with him being a major force in the rotation. And what is your goal with this blog for Clay Buckholtz? I think the number one goal for me, and it, it's very specific, um, is for Clay to connect with Red Sox Nation and all his fans. Whether they believe in the Red Sox or not, maybe they're just fans of Clay. And, and I think what we try to do, because I think some people don't understand the demands on his time and on our time, um, we would love to return every piece of fan mail. We, we truly would, right, Clay? Um, but, but time doesn't allow for that. Sometimes we don't even get to see it. Um, we believe the blog will connect us with, with Clay's fan base. And we hope that you come to the, the blog to listen to Clay, to hear interviews from Clay, or maybe get answer, you know, ask me questions when he's busy that I'm happy to answer for you. We're doing all we can to support you and, and to connect with you. I know that's Clay's number one goal. It's certainly my number one goal. And Locker Room Memorabilia has done a tremendous job in supporting our goals. And we look forward to connecting you with Clay closer and closer as the years go by. And Clay, before we get going, with Bobby sitting next to you, how would you, or is there anything you'd like to tell Bobby in appreciation of what he's done for you? Uh, you know, it's very common for athletes to be represented by someone that they meet out of high school or maybe their junior or sophomore year in college. Having an agent who's known you since you were 14 years old, is there anything that you feel like you'd sh like to share with Bobby as an appreciation uh, for the work he's done for you up to this time? Yeah, I mean, uh, going going into the draft or whatever, it was like it was him and, and somebody else, and there was a big issue about the trust the trust factor because you always hear about agents getting you and hoping that you go high in the draft and then taking that and not talking to you for the next four years until you make it to the big leagues. So. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like that with us. It was uh, a matter of, of being able to trust one another and, and knowing that he was going to do the right thing for me because I was sort of the guinea pig in the whole role anyway. I was the first guy that, that he represented in the draft, and I mean, it worked out it worked out great. But I mean, even even if it wouldn't have worked out the way it did, I feel strong and confident that every every time that he would step up to bat for me, like he would he would tell them the right things and. And everything would be all right, but I mean, it was uh, like I said, he, it was him and another group. Now, now there's a bunch of agencies coming after me saying that, hey, it's too, he's too small, blah blah blah. It's not gonna, it's not gonna help you if you come with us. And then things start rolling from there. But it's, uh, I'm definitely happy with uh, with everything that's that's happened in the past couple of years as far as mine and his relationship, and then his relationship with my family. So it's, it's been great. All right, thank you guys both for your time, and we'll uh, look forward to catching up with you in Pensacola during your workouts at Athletes Performance. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you. good luck.